margins. I'm going to bring in now from the Bonson Group, David Bonson. David, you know, listen, we all love our paychecks inflate. We love the value of our homes inflate. What about the, this whole inflation story vis-a-vis -vis businesses? Well, see, this is the, the category of quote-unquote inflation that causes so many problems in the economy when central bankers confuse it for the negative inflation. Growth is not inflation. Prosperity is not inflation, nor is it the cause of inflation. And that's largely what the Phillips curve model of the 1970s was based on, this idea that if workers are getting paid more money, that's inflationary. As you just pointed out, there's all kinds of circumstances that could lead to higher prices that are not inflationary. I think it's incumbent upon those of us on the political right to understand this better, but it's also incumbent upon people who work in economics to get this down. Growth is a good thing. So let's stay then on this inflation topic. And I'm asking you, when will it end? Mostly so I don't have to say the word transitory anymore. <laughs> when yeah, when yeah, will it all know, be I over? <laughs> I think it's going to be over sooner than people think because it's a numbers game. Everything is month over month, and all of a sudden those numbers have come up where the month over month percentages aren't going to look real sensationalistic anymore. I also think that because so much of the CPI move has been really driven by used car sales, rental car sales, those types of things, that that problem is self-correcting, and all of a sudden it's just going to kind of make a lot of the numbers boring. Now, there's still an aftermath. Math. The housing story is the sure. big one. We, we have a real bubble in housing prices that I think is problematic from an affordability standpoint. But the overall transitory inflation that you're sick of saying, uh, don't worry, Charles, it's going away. <laughs> All right. You know, David, you're really great. Uh, you're, you're a great writer and you cover not just economics, but, you know, social economics. And so I want to shift gears a little bit here. Uh, the CDC, uh, this report, 93,000 drug overdoses last year. You know, I fear personally that it's going to be largely swept under the rug, sort of lumped in with COVID and isolation. But let's face it, this has been a problem for a long time, far too long. What are the economic factors that contribute to this crisis and what do you think we should be doing about it? Well, I think that that number it understates the real problem of last year, because I believe that anyone who died of a drug overdose last year who had COVID was not classified as a drug OD. It was classified as a COVID death. And so that overstated the COVID numbers and understated the drug numbers. But by the CDC zone numbers, as you just said, it was the largest move year over year ever. It was a 27 percent move higher. And um, it speaks to the alienation in our society. Now, look, I, I, you invited me to say this, so forgive me. The economics to me are the second biggest cause. We have a problem in our society of alienation. It's primarily spiritual. And I mean that. I think people need to get back to the spiritual foundation and the Judeo-Christian ethic that made this country great and find an identity and a telos and a purpose that comes from that, a relationship with God and a, a strong community. However, the economist in me understands that the economics flow out of those things. And so we will have a more flourishing society economically when we are able to kind of get back to first things and first principles. And you will have right. less drug over deaths and you will have more freedom. You know, no, no pun here, David. The only word I'll say to that is amen. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Talk to you again Thank soon. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Charles. All right. Bye.